Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a uh, really nice line graph like the one that we have here. Notice that we have one independent variable which is represented on the x-axis. Uh, we have our dependent variable which is the uh, proportion of items recalled here represented on the y-axis. And we have the other IV which is represented by two different lines and we notice that they're maximally distinct, right? We have a white box and a black triangle and we have error bars on this. And so I'm going to show you how to do all of this in Excel because it's um, kind of hard to find some of the things. So we'll just make a graph ending up like this and we're going to delete it. And what I'm going to do is first you have to put your data in uh, rows and columns. And so whatever's in rows will be on your um, x-axis and whatever's in columns will be on your uh, represented by different lines. And so if you just highlight this and select the line graph, you'll have the, the working graph that we're going to start with. Uh, and so I'll change each one of these features as we go here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get rid of the title. because We're going to get rid of that. We'll also get rid of the grid lines here because they are just kind of distracting. So I'm going to start with the axes because, um, well, they're first on the list. So uh, actually, let me um, expand this a little bit so that you can see what I'm clicking on is the axes and then there's some some uh, options over here to the right that you can't see that's cut off of the screen uh, and I just selected that and uh, what I want to do now is um, first figure out uh, tick marks that sort of thing uh, so we can go down to tick marks and you can, if you have major type outside, you can have cross and you can see that they show up. So now one thing you'll notice that the color of this is gray. So we want to um, make the line a solid line and we want to change the color to black so that we can see it better. That's a thing that um, Excel likes to do, unfortunately, is make it like that. So we got the x-axis is pretty good, but you notice the y-axis, we need that. So you can either double click on on that. And I'm going to select vertical axis, and so you can see that we have no color there. And there we go. We got that going. So that's one thing. Now we noticed we need the uh, labels for each axis. So I'm going to go back to this thing and we have access titles you just check on it and they'll pop up and then you can edit them right so here's where we can put in our uh, mean proportion of items recalled now that may be looks a little long so what I'm going to do is right click on it, change the font, make it a little bit smaller. So we'll make it a nine point font and you can see that it gets a little bit smaller. We can still read that, right? Access title down here. This is going to be study mood. Okay, so we're good. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll work on this legend here. We're going to make it out, go out to the right because it just looks a little bit better out to the right. So if you click on legend and oops, legend and then you can select the position off here off screen you can't see it but I can, I'm selecting the right so that's nice now we want the lines and we want to put in our uh, data so uh, I'm gonna click on the line and you can see the series options comes on so the first thing that we can do is we can select a solid line and we're gonna make it oh, don't know why I did that for one side but we're gonna make it black solid black line Right, the there we go. We got the whole all three groups now. Now we're going to change the marker. So we're going to make this one. We'll make this one the black triangles. Okay. So first thing you select the marker options. You'll see built-ins, and we'll go to triangle. Five point font, five point uh, marker size is pretty good. The fill. We're going to make it a solid fill. We're going to make it black. Okay. That'll make it a black triangle. And then the border will make a solid line triangle as well. So we can take a look at it. There's our triangles, right? And you, if you want to increase them, you just increase the size. So we're doing pretty good, but we need error bars. Now, error bars are kind of tricky for these. Uh, the thing that I will do is click on the series. And then if you go to error bars, 
And then off screen here, there's a more options. So you select more options and then you're gonna get this. So what we want is we want both above and below for the error bars. Now here's the tricky part. We go to custom and we're doing, we gotta make sure that we're on the right one here. So we're on the, the uh, column here to the right. So it's this column, right, the sad column. And so we're gonna select the errors for the sad column here, right? So we go to custom, specify values, and now we gotta do it for the positive, right? And then we're gonna do the same thing for the negative. If you don't do the negative, it'll only go up and it won't go up and down to the same length. So we're gonna specify these. There we go, that should work. Nicely done. I'm gonna do it again for the other line if you missed it. Uh, but that we got our error bars and we got our symbols. So let's do this for the other series. So we're gonna first select that. We're gonna make this line, we're gonna make it black also to be consistent here. Now let's change the marker. We'll go to a uh, no fill and we'll make it a box. So we'll make it a box and we'll make the border a solid line and make it black. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. You can also, in might wanna bump this up a little bit. So maybe we'll bump this up the marker um, a little bit. We're gonna increase the marker to maybe a six point font to make it look a little bit better. Now we need error bars. So I'm gonna close this out and go back to our error bars. Click on that. Go over to more options, which is off screen. Sorry about that. And we're gonna do the same thing, but now we're dealing with this column is our error bars. And we're gonna to have to input that twice. So we want um, both direction. And we're gonna select custom, specify values. And so we want these values this time. So, and we wanna do it for the upward and negative deflection so that we have them going both directions. And voila boom, we got our, uh, we got our nice looking graph. Let me close this so you can sort of see it. Uh, I don't know what's going on over here, but let's fix this series again. Let's see if this fixes it. There it goes, fixes that. Now you notice the one last thing is we need a capper to this um, legend over here. So what I would do is, let me find the text box. Here we go, text, we're gonna insert a text box. So you can just put in a little text box and we can call it test mood, right, for a label. You just want it to match your um, X axis and I already knew that that was a 10 point font from doing this earlier. Uh, but we just do this and then you can sort of move it around so that it looks good and boom you got your figure now the one other thing is if you copy and paste this into word um, which I can do but I can copy paste this into word one thing you'll get a border around the whole thing so if you right click on this and click on outline and select no outline now you won't get a border around it right so let me copy this and then open up uh, word and get it in here and you can see that we have a nice pasted uh, figure in here. And of course, we can start typing our figure caption and so on, right? So this would be italicized and then you're gonna finish the rest of it off. There's your figure. Uh, okay, so hopefully you can rewind if you need to to figure out how to do these graphs like that.